All right, so welcome back in today. Let's dive into Bitcoin and what is and could be one of the biggest market corrections we've seen in a long time. What's causing all this? We'll dive into all of that and so much more. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into TechPath. As you guys can see, I am held up here in my home bunker because I am sick. And that's the reason we haven't done a couple of videos on Monday and Tuesday this week, but over the weekend, took a little one for the team and uh, have been basically working here from the home studio. So you guys are getting, hopefully uh, you can understand what I'm saying and we can get as much information out to you as possible, but just understand that I may have to take a water drink every once in a while. So just uh, kind of chill, but let's get into, of course, Bitcoin. Bitcoin is really, I think the, the new stable aspect of what's happening in crypto it has been for quite some time, but at the same time, there are a ton of market pressures that are really pushing onto Bitcoin. And one of the biggest things you have to be aware of is not only the indicators coming over from the stock market, even though we've seen a lot of people kind of talk about Bitcoin starting to peg with the traditional markets, such as, you know, the Dow. And though I think a lot of people, and I was listening to Kathy Wood talk about this just yesterday, is that they believe a lot of the innovate innovation investment companies like Kathy and, and what ARK is doing believe that we are going to see a separation and that crypto in general could depart. Now, there's a lot of things at play here. We'll get into Luna on another video. I know you guys are probably wondering about all about Luna. And we've had Luna as kind of a star on our network for quite some time. But at the same time, over the past month, we've noticed a lot of downtrend coming in Luna, which is why we exited my position and as always, just remember, these are market movers. Market movers are straightforward. We get you a whole bunch of news. We'll bring you some additional data, but we'll also give you a full-fledged understanding of where we're going, but not investment advice. Mainly, this is to help you get it, get going in your direction. Let's jump to this first story. I want to jump in uh, to what Vox is saying. And essentially, what they're reporting here is the stock market's panicking. But you don't have to. It's really kind of an, an, a situation right here on shrinking markets. And there's a lot of factors involved in how the market responded to Chair Powell's response on the 50 basis points uh, increase last week. Now, in the beginning, it was a slight up, and then the market essentially started to crater. A lot of times, though, what happens is you'll see some corrections start to move back in. What I think is going on is that we are seeing traders in a lot of investment companies, including hedge funds, et cetera, start to look for new and greener pastures. And there are some green pastures out there when you look at the overall crypto market. A lot of news with Polygon this week. Obviously, their partnership with Meta, that's going to start changing things. We'll see Instagram start to play into the NFT market. There's so much here that I think we'll see uh, in the aspect of some of the traditional market makers starting to move more and more into crypto. Another thing that really starts to pressure this is the Fed, why it may not bail out the stock market at this time. And there's a lot leading into this because of the fact that Powell really kind of focused in on a couple of things. Let me uh, zoom in on this for you guys just a little bit. But he really started talking about the fact that what we are looking at right now is a way to create a soft landing. Now, whether or not they can create one or not is still a question mark, I think, with a lot of people. And I put out a tweet that talked a lot about this. I'll, I'll I highlight some of those things that have been happening. But why it matters right now, investors can't count on the Fed right now in a potential bear market of 2022, is the Fed is a term used as described as central bank, banks' uh, recent tendency to pivot toward looser money whenever markets drop. Now, again, this goes back to my point, looser money beating, I feel like most likely going to be the crypto market. So there are some factors to this that could lead into why we're seeing such volatility happen within Terra, within Luna, and within some of the stable, coin, stable coins outside. Now, the question is, is can USDT or even USDC be affected by this? A lot of this could start to play into this. If you look back to what they're talking about here is if you flash back into late 2015, the Fed already sent signals that sustained monetary tightening was on the way. Uh, then they backed off in the ensuing weeks in the financial markets. Of course, at that time, they went haywire. So 
a lot of that is kind of already moving into where I think the market is going now with the fact that the Fed is looking at trying to, one, soften the, the landing. Now, there's some good signs here because we saw a little bit of softness in the inflation number uh, come back. So that in itself, I think, indicates that the market's not going to get a safety net this time around. And I think that's sending signals through the market, and we'll continue to see this. If you look at markets in free fall right here as investors sell off, and this has been in the tech sector and some of the best innovators out there. Of course, Kathy Wood herself even talked about this, is that there has been an absolute deluge of the amount of investors that have really started to move out of the market and look, re, looking at repositioning their entire position, whether you're going into energy or some of the things that have been able to stabilize. But the tech sector has really taken a hard, a hard uh, beating. Rising yields, of course, are hammering tech stocks, uh, and we'll continue to see this, I think, with uh, really throughout the summer. And then also Bitcoin, of course, has fell to one of its lowest levels. And we know that it, it hit under 30. And again, that was exactly what happened last summer. So I don't necessarily see that being a big indicator here. I think the market pressures for Bitcoin now is the fact that there's a lot more loose money starting to come into this space, knowing what's happening in traditional markets they're looking for a feeding zone, and crypto might be the feeding zone. In fact, I think that's what happened with UST, Terra, and its stablecoin debacle that it's going through right now. We'll talk about that in another video, but I do believe that is one of the big key factors in this. If you look to this tweet, uh, Gareth kind of broke this out. Uh, he said, hey, the stock market's doing the job of the Federal Reserve. Inflation will come crashing down as the wealth effect turns into the broke effect. Uh, Gareth's never, he needs to be a comedian, I think. But the point is, is that he's making is that the money is really starting to dry up in some of the traditional markets. And these guys are hedge fund masters. They are after profit at all costs. They're not your friends. We've invited them into this space. Expect some carnage. And we're going to see more of it. I believe we'll see more of it. And Bitcoin may actually be one of those that starts to take a little bit of a beating. So let's take a look at where Bitcoin is right now. Here's Crypto World, uh, or excuse me, CNBC talking about, I love the fact that they've got that right there, Crypto World on their new segment. Um, briefly dropping below 30K. Investors, of course, fleeing risky assets. A lot of, which I think is a little bit counterintuitive if we do see some investors moving out of more you know risky and or high volatile assets the other option for this is going to be either bitcoin the winner here might actually be usdc so there's a lot of factors that play into this but right now i think under 30k the big question is whether or not it can hold 30k if it can hold 30k could be some signs we're going to have evidence later this week uh, take a look at this in a different way and maybe take a look at what the long term for the rest of May and part of June would be. Also, 40% of Bitcoin investors now are underwater, so out of the money. And I think this is pretty typical, though at the same time, I look at this and I think about the amount of investors who are still in the money here. So I think a lot of people are still looking at Bitcoin as a volatile asset. But remember, 30,000, even if it does go to 25 or in some cases 24, like we've been analyzing for the last couple of weeks, that still would be significantly up over what Bitcoin was in 2019. So there is a lot of speculation as to whether or not Bitcoin can hold these price positions. And I think this is going to be a factor. Now, the cool thing is that sentiment for Bitcoin has not been as volatile as a lot of the altcoins, which we expected and even Ethereum to a certain extent. Now, Ethereum is actually doing pretty decent, but at the same time, I do feel like this is going to be a march to ETH2. ETH2 could be one of the catalysts that help pull this out of the market. So there's a lot happening here right now in where Bitcoin will be going. The big factor I think everybody's talking about right now, of course, is Michael Saylor. And what is his position going to be? Will he sell as one of the key holders of Bitcoin. Now, this is a concern I have because I almost wonder if Sailor's now a target. Because when you look at the hedge funds and a lot of big money coming into the market, could they start to look to try to put some sell pressure onto Sailor with the position that he's got? 
Now, a lot is happening with him. Largest corporate Bitcoin holder is now in the red. Uh, obviously, a bit a dip down to 30K. MicroStrategy, of course, paid an average of 30,700. You can kind of see it right here. Let me zoom in on that for you guys. And I think as the largest corporate holder with MicroStrategy, the big factor here is where is the pain point going to be for Michael Saylor? And that is going to be a big question. Now, if you look at his, you know, his conviction toward the asset, it just doesn't feel like he's going to be one to fold or call in the cards. And of course, he's saying right here, suggesting that it's never going to happen, never going to sell Bitcoin. They kind of go into this loan that they've got right here. It's a $205 million loan. Hang on, let me pull up on that one a little bit more. As you can see, this is a $205 million term loan that needs to maintain $410 million as collateral. So linking uh, this to his Q1 investor presentation, Saylor also noted that uh, MicroStrategy is thinking of over almost 130,000 Bitcoin stash uh, at 115,000 or more than $3 billion at current prices. So this is still remaining un unencumbered. So he's got the potential fail-safe or a safety net, so to speak. I don't know that there could be enough pressure, not one that would really make. Now, could we see Bitcoin get pushed way down? It will really depend on how much of big money is holding Bitcoin is willing to take it down to the floor. That's the real question right now I have with Bitcoin. The inflows, though, hit three-month highs as market braces uh, for more downside. This, again, gets back to the whole point of where Bitcoin could be going. And I think as inflows take over, you can kind of see it right here. One of the things that you have to kind of consider is, really according to all digital assets, is that we will start to see a lot of dumps. We will start to see a lot of rebalancing in portfolios. And Bitcoin could kind of come into that cycle of some rebalancing that could happen. Now, could it be something that really pushes the sales price down? It is still a question mark. But one of the things that Glassnode kind of focused on right here, exchange inflow volume, seven day, just reached a three month high. This was almost uh, one 755 uh, Bitcoin and the previous high was 729. So I think this is a factor as we look at potential whales exiting Bitcoin. And again, this gets back to Sailor. If too many whales start to exit Bitcoin, this could be a big problem for him. All right, so I want to thank our sponsor today. That's iTrust Capital. If you guys are looking at long-term investment, this is the way to go, and that is a crypto IRA. One thing is that I always look at is who is the most trusted ones out there, and when you think about trust, you always look at kind of the overall value, and what they've done here is over $5 billion in transactions. Uh, they did a raise at $125 million, which gave them a $1.3 billion value, and then over 150,000 accounts have been created on this program. So great platform, easy to get to. Make sure and use our link below and use uh, iTrust Capital. You're going to get $100 in a funding reward when you sign up with our link. Make sure and check it out. So let's jump over to another story here. This is on Coinbase. Uh, and really, this is about Brian Armstrong trying to protect what's happening in the market. And when you look at what he's talking about, he apologized for seemingly neglecting the platform's customers when it comes to protecting them from a catastrophic, catastrophic black swan event. There's a lot of things that kind of play into this market because there is some protection there for prime custody. And I think that's Coinbase's prime and their custody customers have strong legal protections uh, in their terms of service. But unfortunately, retailers do not. So retail investors. So this is a big factor. He also addressed the bankruptcy issue. Pretty much said this is not an, a not issue. It was something they were addressing because of some pressures from the Fed, which they have in the SAB 121. Basically, it's saying that the Fed is requiring some additional securities, and that could be something that starts to put some pressure on Coinbase, which if it does, this is something that is in the cards, but not necessarily a, a risk at this point, and definitely not one if you continue to see Coinbase's stock price right now really in a, a little bit of a turmoil. I want to jump over to the chart real quick. And let's take a look at the chart. All right, so as I kind of indicated, Bitcoin slide, we've had this pretty much down uh, really all along uh, since, really since right here at about 47K. 
And we've seen these this slide continue on down. And again, dropping sentiment, you've got it at 69.12, then it goes into 68, had a light, a, a light drop there. The bigger concern I have right here are these amplification numbers from a 67 to a 64 to a 63. Now, this is interesting because even though sentiment rose, amplification didn't raise as much with it. And that is a concern because it usually when we start to see the gap uh, closing on amp and sentiment, it usually does mean we're going to see a little bit of an upward trend. That's not necessarily the case. And I think we're seeing this play out right here with that one green candle day and now in a red candle day. And also, I think the other thing that when you look at uh, the red candle day that's closing right now or will be closing tonight. I think the factor here is whether or not Bitcoin can sweep off the bottom or if we get to see more downselling pressure. Now, if you look at a little bit of the move here, odd where, let me kind of zoom in on this, but you kind of see money flow is still exiting. We're not necessarily seeing a full movement out just yet. Uh, we'll break this down with Evan a little bit on market cipher on what you might see uh, coming into the market right now. But volume, of course, is still very high right now. And again, I think it's puts pressure on Bitcoin. All right, so let's jump over to another quick, at least a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel. And that, of course, is the inflation rate. Because the inflation rate is, I think, still the culprit of all of these woes in the market. This has caused the interest rate move. It's caused the Fed to act. The Fed acting has caused the market to tumble. The market tumbling is causing it. You see the domino effect. You know what I'm talking about. So the factor here is that you're starting to see for the first time, we actually saw a decrease really since back here in July where we saw 5.4 to 5.3, then back to 5.4 and 6.2. What we got to stay away from is this July period. Now, remember back in July, this was when Bitcoin hit its $29,000 rate. And this is a factor I think has a lot of similarities, a lot of correlation back to, to what is happening with inflation. So if we see the pressures of inflation going down in May, uh, and if we see, especially if we see something under eight and in the sevens, I don't know that we can get that kind of dump in terms of inflation, but there are a lot of pressures going on to this. Let's take, I wanted to kind of just show you some of the tweets I put out the other day that really kind of indicate where I see this going. The bad news first, stocks are in trouble. Obviously, we've seen this even when they perform. We had some stock performers that were actually doing well and the stock was dropping. That's when you know we have problems. Bond yield, to, yield uh, bonds year to date, worst performance since 1788. Inventories, though, are up, and that's a problem because that's going to affect prices. In other words, we're going to see prices to start to drop. Uh, at the same time, we've got China and the EU in recession. We've got a, one quarter of GDP already in the books with decline. If we get another one, that means we're in an official recession. If you have two quarters, uh, and this could happen in Q3. The deal flow is gone in Silicon Valley. And I go on to talk about this on the bad. PPI inflation up 11%. CPI, we knew 8.5. Uh, Q over Q productivity down. Less margins means higher unemployment. And number nine, spending right now is down 20% year over year. So these are factors right now that will affect inflation because the market pressures, and kind of like Gareth's tweet earlier in the show, is that there's a lot of people that have run out of money or they got wrecked in whether it's in traditional markets, even if you're a Tesla holder right now, you're way down. So there are a lot of big, big uh, positions out there that have been really pummeled. Now that's not all the bad news though. There are some, there is some good news here and I want to kind of outline that. So when you look at the good news uh, to push inflation down, job wages are slowing. I know that sounds bad, but the only way you can slow inflation and get people to get hired is if job wages actually actually slow down. So that's number one. Number two, adoption of in innovation is going to increase profits. And this is something that a lot of people talk about. We talk about here on the channel all the time. And that is that innovation is one of the key factors that's going to drive society forward. It's also going to drive a lot of the markets forward, including the companies that are trying to make money. And the number one innovation area is, guess what? Web3. 
That is you guys. That's all of you. A lot of you, I think, are early, so early, you're getting a chance to experience maybe your first true bear market. And this is where billionaires are made. So the good news is still pushing this inflation down, starting to get the market correct. We have to go through these pains to get the gain. So you can kind of see it right here. Personal consumption slowing, lower inflation coming. Used car sales dropped 13% in April. That's another big sign because car prices account for a third of the overall inflation rate. That's not all. The other thing you've got is uh, credit defaults are increasing. Another big problem, but that is going to push the Fed to stop the hikes. And then also the Fed is going to have a lot more data because of all of what's happening right now, and expect the Fed to probably go to either a point, a point 25 basis points or lower on its next or maybe zero in terms of a rate change. Number eight is innovation will lead over the next five years. This is something we've talked about on this channel all the time. It's what this channel does. And that I do believe is going to be Web3 and blockchain. And then number nine, crypto, I think will break away from the traditional markets and this is something that needs to happen because right now it has been a very interesting connection. There's a lot of analysts that have looked at this and say there really is no correlation. The only correlation right now that could be pushing is if we see a lot of movement coming from traditional finance into the market because they're looking for, for profits. And I think that is a factor that you've got to keep in mind, especially as we go out and start to see inflation corrected which will effectively cause the Fed to slow down and pull the hammer off. That's the big news. I think that's the one we got to watch out for. All right, guys. So I'm going to try to get as much information and stuff to you as I can. Uh, my voice, of course, is failing me, but I'm getting better. That's the good part. Lots of water, hydration. You know, wife's a doctor, so I got good care. I'm good. Uh, but the key is, is we had a lot of research going on in the background for you. CPI numbers drop today as well. Keep an eye on that one. We'll try to keep you updated. I am going to give you another video as well, possibly today on Luna. We'll get into that if we can. Again, as always, make sure and uh, catch us on Twitter. You can catch me out at, uh, on Twitter at Paul Barron. I'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.